This episode and all of our DroidCon NYC coverage is brought to you by Verimatrix Cybersecurity, protecting the applications that drive the digital economy. Learn more at VerimatrixCybersecurity.com. Joycon New York City, and we've got another amazing speaker with us, uh, JP Jonathan Petitfer. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. All right, JP, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and uh, what do you, uh, who do you work for? What do you do? Um, I'm a senior software engineer at Netflix. I've been there for about a year and a half now. Um, it's been it's been good. I mainly work on growth product experiences. It's been a really good experience so far. So everything around sign up, non-member homepage, which is usually like the first thing you see when you open an app. Uh, I was going to say, like, usually when you work on an app like that, especially Netflix, it's well known, all your family and friends are like, so what part of it, did, what, what what did you work on that I can see? And you're yeah. just like, There's up. nothing, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there's nothing that I work on they'll probably see, because most of the time they're usually members already. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the work that I work on is usually for, like, non-members, um, mm -hmm. in our case, what we call, like, never members, people who are new to the platform, mm -hmm. different things like that. All right, well, if you're, if you're signing up for Netflix for the first time, you might have to, you might have JP to thank for your good experience. Um, but so, JP, you, you're actually giving a talk, um, a lightning talk, uh, this this uh, this year at DroidCon New York. And actually, the topic of your talk is something that our listeners, the Android faithful, really love, and that's widgets. Yep. So uh, I'm going to ask you a leading question because we've talked about widgets before, JP and me. So I, I wanted to ask you a leading question because I, I, think, I think I might know how you answer, but... You know, people love widgets, users love widgets, but I think it's fair to say that devs don't often make widgets, or you might, there's not as many widgets in that little picker as you might expect. JP, why do you think that is? Because it's just hard to make, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but but what? Yeah. It's just like, it's just so hard. Um, mm. There's remote views that are probably like the worst thing for like developers, mainly because we don't necessarily have con really control over it. Um, mm -hmm. It's usually, I guess, like the, the launchers. Yeah. Um, which would be like, uh, for instance, like your Pixel launcher or like the, I, I don't I forgot what the Samsung one is called, but usually every manufacturer has their own launcher. So they all implement it differently. So sometimes it's it's usually a case where it's like, it could work on one phone, but it probably won't work on another on another phone. But remote views are supposed to kind of help that. Mm -hmm. But they also haven't been changed since like the, since basically like the um, introduction of Android yeah. for a really long time. And it's been like, honestly, really painful <laughs> to kind of work work with. Um, just for a little bit more backstory, I I used to work at uh, Twitter prior, what well, Twitter X prior to this, and I used to work on notifications. And... Ironically enough, notifications also use remote views, so, mm -hmm. so a lot of the pain points that you run into with widgets, you're running to make, you're making like custom uh, notifications also, you're running to a lot of those issues, so it's a lot of shared pain points for sure, so I'm like really excited for like Jetpack Lance, the, the talk that I'll be talking about tomorrow, mm -hmm. where it's where I'm hoping, hoping it'll basically resolve a lot of the pain points that you normally see in like a remote view um, situation when developing like widgets or even notifications in our case. So can you elaborate a bit on what some of those pain points currently are when you're using you know remote views? Yeah. Um, it's a very manual process, like for literally like everything that you want to want to do um, for the most part. So. A lot of the things that would probably be simple to do, like in-app, for in, for instance, is not necessarily available to you in a remote, a remote view um, situation, and you can only update it at certain points and times. And when you want to introduce like images and different things like that to it, that makes it even harder, um, just because you have to make sure the image is already loaded. You can't like just kind of like async load. Um, an, an image just because it's like it's never as simple like it has to be already kind of loaded and kind of cached and just like ready to go ready to go once you're ready to like update like your ui and in, in our case like the widget so in a sense like a widget is like trying to do a regular app but with like one arm and one foot tied behind your back and maybe like you know only able to say words that start with a through d it yes it yeah, feels exactly. like that. Yes, it definitely. Because you're limited in the type of scope that you have, for, sh for sure, just because it has to be backported to every Android device that's been around basically since like 1.0, even though people don't necessarily use those, use those but it hasn't actually like added much new functionality to, to remote view. So it's, it's a really annoying. So you're stuck with like text, images, but images you have to have the image already loaded, different things like that. You can't necessarily scroll horizontally just because at that point, the... Um, you wouldn't be able to actually like scroll through your launcher, so the different pages that you have on your apps on your phone, because you can't scroll horizontally, you can't actually have like a list that scrolls horizontally in your widget. You can only scroll vertically, but even doing stuff like that, it's such a it's such a pain. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's just I'm getting a little bit palpitations here, and you talk about it. So you were talking about Glance, though. So a lot of our listeners have heard me talk about Jetpack and Pose very enthusiastically. Now, Glance is related or using Jetpack and Pose. Can you talk a little bit high level? What is Glance? Yeah. So Glance is a little separate from Jetpack and um, Compose. Like it shares the same kind of declarative UI and like declarative functions and like the com- composable function that you know and love with Jetpack Compose, but it's still separate. Like the names of it the same. So you'll see like text, you'll see button, you'll see rows, you'll see co- you'll see columns, but like the package names are completely different. Mm. Some of the same parameters are probably not even available to you. So um, in our case, uh, I, I was honestly just working on this. Like for instance, you can't do like animations when it comes to widgets. Um, and that's something that you can probably do with the regular Jetpack Compose because it's kind of like built in modifiers, different things like that. Like you have all of those available to you, but with widgets specifically, it's like you, you still don't have a lot of a lot of that like you'll probably have to kind of like roll your own solution to kind of get that to um to work which you which will probably bring you back to remote view land <laughs> because you can't necessarily do that in uh jetpack composed at least not today okay so but you are saying it's going to be easier and as um, rem- correct me if i'm wrong but glance also as you said remote views are kind of doing dual du- du- dual duty mm-hmm. with both notifications and widgets mm-hmm. does glance also have that kind of same multitaskiness um not necessarily for notifications yet i'm assuming at some point like we'll probably get notification support um because today jetpack glance actually supports both app widgets and um ironically wear os um tiles um i don't know if you can actually see this but this is actually an a wear tile app that i actually made a a while ago um it actually uses jetpack glance um for it and this is yeah yeah, yeah, it's actually like really it's actually really straightforward to make um because you don't have to use um remote views anymore anymore so it's like it's really it's it's honestly like so much simpler like i made it probably like a day okay so not notifications but watch faces which um the watch watch faces and tiles yeah the the, the jetpack glance tiles library yeah yeah Yeah, yeah, it's pretty it's it's pretty nice (laughs) so because essentially at least what i try to think of jetpack glance it should replace remote views like I don't, I don't think it's specifically like for like app widgets or for tiles. Um, for instance, it's just remote views in general. It should be replacing. So at least that's my hope. <laughs> so this whole deal with Glance, you know, is trying to simplify or at least like make creating app widgets easier. Yes. But on the other side, you know, there's not if there's not much demand from users for widgets. If, if not a lot of users are actually using the widgets, there's not going to be a lot of pressure on developers to actually add them. So one of the things I've noticed recently, you know, using Android over the many years is that really there's not a lot of ways that apps can actually surface widgets to users except for like providing like a screen inside the application. Like even within the launcher, right? Mm-hmm. You have this widget picker that's not really sorted yep. by like, you know, recommendations. Yep. It's just sorted alphabetically. Yep. <laughs> you have this simple preview yep. that is not even reflective potentially of the content that's being shown. Yep. Can you talk about some of the things that you think Google should change in Android to maybe make it easier for developers to surface or promote their widgets? Yep, definitely. There's there's a couple of different ways you can kind of, uh, I guess they call it kind of like discoverability of, of widgets. Um, there, There's like one like real way you can kind of do it now, nowadays. It's like a, I forgot what it's called, it's like the request app pin widget um, and it's basically something that the launchers should take care of so most like big launchers um, so like the Pixel 1 the Samsung 1 should have support for, um, for something like this but um, essentially it it's like a dialogue that essentially shows up um, within the actual app and from there you can pin it and then it'll just open up like your home launcher and you can kind of put it anywhere so depending on like the context of your app um, you can kind of like think of like really I feel like straightforward like designs of like how can I add this widget like from the app whether it's like after logging in or like someone has like a really great like experience with your app like the same way like you'll ask folks to to rate your app like when they Mm -hmm. like finish like a transaction or something like that who knows maybe like add this order widget so to kind of like keep yourself kind of like um, up to date with it and then from there you can kind of prompt them to kind of like add let's add the let's pin the widget to your home screen and different things like that i think i've actually seen that yeah. uh, google uses that on their pixel phone yes. you go to like the battery settings yes. and tap on battery widget mm-hmm. it'll like ask you to add the battery widget to your home screen yep. yeah yeah yep yep yep, yep. and actually I, I think i read recently android 15 <laughs> adds a way for you to like show a customized preview in the widget picker yes. you know anything about that um not necessarily i haven't messed around with it that much but yes there is a way to add like the custom int- implementation basically to make it as like close to how it would look live within the actual preview because the thing about the hard thing about just like how widgets work in general because your app isn't necessarily running usually when folks are trying to like add these 
at these widgets, you kind of got to keep them kind of updated and, and literally just keep them just like, how would it actually look? So like your contacts app, for instance, most of the time, you don't, no one wants to see placeholder images of people that don't actually know. But but if you show them contacts of like people that they actually know, and like faces of like people that they actually know, then they might be a little bit more enticed to like, OK, let me just add this to my home screen because I don't know. I, I, I see someone that I actually know, like my best friend. <laughs> and it's like, why not? Just put, just put them on my home screen. Why not? So Android actually supported, you know, right now on most Android devices, you can only add widgets to the home screen. Yep. But back in the past, previously before Android Lollipop, yep. you could add them to the lock screen. Yep. And some OEMs still allow you to yeah, add them to the in yep. other places. Yep. But Google seems to be actually bringing this back to the lock screen too with yep. the latest um, release for tablets. Yep. I wanted to hear your opinions on this new surface for lock screen, or this, I guess, revitalized surface. Yeah. Do you uh, think this will encourage developers to, you know, revisit widgets? I hope so. Um, in general, I, I always feel like any surface area that your app can essentially be in outside of outside of the app is always good for for the app. It's just more so. We just need more meaningful widgets. Um, I felt like those are really long time where we're just making just widgets just to make widgets. Yeah. But it's just like at the end of the day, it's like. When you make a widget, it's like, would I actually use this use this widget? Um, is always just like my question. Whenever I'm, whenever I see um, a widget or like something that that I would actually like make, if even if it's like something like really quick, like even something that I made for for the talk that I'm doing tomorrow, um, I actually created a widget um, using Jetpack Glant to, just to kind of just like inform kind of just like my entire um, presentation. And it was something that I would probably use. Like it, it works with real data, like literally everything. I'm using like the movie database um, API for, mm -hmm. for it. And it basically shows you like what the popular like movies are for like the literally for the week. So it's not the greatest design, at least not yet. I'm an engineer, not necessarily a designer, <laughs> but, um, but it does work. Um, and it was kind of like a step in the right direction. And uh if you could go to Google right now, you know, if you could tell them anything you wanted to add, like, I want you to add this for widgets right now, mm -hmm. what would your top priority be? Um, definitely better async image loading. Um, they had an example, at least in the, in the code when I was doing like the, the implementation of my, my little uh, sample widget app. Um, it's supposed to work, but it, it didn't work for me. I don't know if there's something that I, would, that I was doing, but it seemed a little bit too simple i guess to not necessarily simple i guess it was too good to be true um <laughs> and when i when i saw it um initially because i think it was like an async image uh composable function that you could essentially um use and you could pass in like any uri or url of whatever image and it's supposed to work but it didn't work so i ended up basically going like a completely different route to actually get it to work so that would be nice and even video playback i think that would be like really helpful um not necessarily just even for like uh like a company like like netflix but i think in general like that would be nice to just see like more like video playback literally just like in widgets because why not i feel like video playback is kind of just like the, the way to go especially when you have like apps like instagram um tiktok um literally all of these apps can can make use of it because it could be like literally another another surface area for for them to kind of like show their feed even though they don't actually have to actually open an app all right well i mean it sounds like i mean i know we all love widgets and we you can't get enough well i'm really happy that we have folks like jp in the community that are doing the hard work um, making knowledge known about like kind of the new avenues we have for it and kind of having a lot of good ideas. So, JP, really appreciate it. Keep fighting the good fight for the widgets out there. And, uh, yeah, if people wanted to contact you, um, maybe with widget ideas or <laughs> otherwise, where can they find you? Um, find me on LinkedIn. That's probably the easiest way to find me. Um, full name. Hopefully they put it, like, down here or something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, find me on LinkedIn. Definitely send me a message. Um, and um, can I say one, one, one more thing? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, hopefully, I don't know if this is in the works, but I really hope it is. But if Jetpack Glance does end up having support for notifications, I think that would really be like a really big game changer overall for, for just like notifications experience that we have right now. Right, please, Google. Yes, please. Yeah, <laughs> please. please. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll be better. We'll do better by you if you give us the right tools. Yes, definitely. But. Definitely. I know they've added like a couple different like notification layouts over, over the years, but mm. it would be like really nice to kind of just like being able to build more custom notifications just, just without remote yeah. views because it's like it's it's really it's really old at this point. I remote feel like we have to we have to move on yeah. from yeah. them at this, at this point. Help, help us make you help us make you kind of feel. All right. Well, thank you so much, JP. Thank you. Um, good luck on your talk tomorrow. Thanks for taking time out of your prep yeah, and, sure. and and your conference to talk to us. But really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate y'all for having me for sure. Thank All you. right. Yeah, thank All you. Right. And that's it. And we'll see you guys next one. Thank you.